Hi, I'm Steve Eunice. Welcome to the Speeding Bulletin, your Superman highlights video, bringing you up to speed on everything that took place during the week, March 29th to April 4th, 2017. Some of our top news stories this week included Warner Brothers shows an extended Justice League trailer at CinemaCon in Las Vegas. The CW gave us a behind-the-scenes look at the visual effects of Supergirl. And our April Fool's Day prank about the Superman statue in Metropolis, Illinois went viral. Let's check out these news stories and more in this week's Speeding Bulletin. In movie news, The Big Picture was the title of the presentation Warner Brothers delivered to those in attendance at CinemaCon in Las Vegas last week. During the presentation, an extended version of the Justice League trailer was shown, which included new footage not seen in the version released online on March 25th. Director Zack Snyder was joined on stage by Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Ray Fisher, Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller. Superman the Movie is being shown at the Egyptian Theatre in Hollywood on Sunday, April 16th at 7.30pm as part of a double bill with The Day the Earth Stood Still. The Superman the Movie presentation will be a 35mm print of the 143 minute theatrical cut with the original sound mix. Aaron Smolinski, who starred as the infant Kal-El in the film, Mike Matasino, producer at La La Land Records, and Jim Bowers, Superman the Movie historian, will all be in attendance. Tickets can be purchased via the American Cinematheque website. A get-together is being organised for fans to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Christopher Reeve's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on Saturday, April 15th. Jim Bowers was at the ceremony in 1997 photographing the event and he'll be at the star again on April 15th to meet and greet fellow fans and to take photos. Photos from the 1997 ceremony will also be on display and anyone interested in attending should send a private message to Jim Bowers via Facebook on the day. In TV news, Superman homepage reviewer T.A. Hewitt reviewed the latest episode of the Supergirl TV series titled Distant Sun. In this episode, a large bounty is put out on Supergirl and aliens from far and near attack National City intent on taking out the Woman of Steel. T.A. gave this episode a 3 out of 5 saying, a solid episode but one that has nearly no connection to the earlier actions of the season. With Katie McGrath announced as becoming a Supergirl series regular cast member in season 3, it's obvious Lena Luthor is going to play a bigger role in Kara's life next season, but what about now? Does Lena already know that Kara is leading a double life? When TV Line asked Melissa Benoist, she answered, I don't know, but you can never trust the Luthor, so maybe. The CW has released a video giving us a behind the scenes look at how the visual effects of season 2 of Supergirl are created. The next new episode of Supergirl is titled Ace Reporter and this episode is scheduled to air on the CW on Monday, April 24th. Superman homepage reviewer Thomas Dreyfus reviewed one of the episodes of Justice League Action that screened at WonderCon on April 2nd. This episode was titled Forget Me Not and Thomas rated it a 5 out of 5 saying this episode was hysterical from beginning to end as the memory wipe DC Trinity stumbles their way to superheroism with varying degrees of comedy. There were no comic books for us to review this week, so we head straight into this week's list. And comic books available this week from April 5th, 2017 include DC Comics Bombshells number 25, Injustice Ground Zero number 9, Justice League number 18, which is available in a variant cover, Superman number 20 is also available in a variant cover, Batman Superman Volume 6 Universe's Finest Hardcover, Batman Superman Volume 5 Truth Hurts Trade Paperback, Earth 2 Society Volume 3 A Whole New World Trade Paperback, and Superman Volume 2 Trials of the Super Sun Trade Paperback from the Rebirth Era. Inspired by the animated series airing on Cartoon Network, with these Justice League action figures and toys, fans can recreate all their favourite episodes. Grab the Justice League Action Mini Figures 3 Pack for $13.98. Or how about this Justice League Action Superman 12-inch figure for just $10.81. These and other Justice League Action figures and toys are available from a one-stop Superman shop. 
the Superman homepage online store at supermanhomepage.com slash shop. In other news, Warner Brothers Consumer Products, in partnership with DC Entertainment, announced its first annual DC Kids Superhero Month, designed to engage new and existing fans in this interactive initiative with their favourite DC superheroes and be inspired to be their own superhero. This multifaceted campaign will run through the entire month of April and kicked off with an all-new episode of the original YouTube series DC Kids. Each week, DC Kids will have DC Kids Superhero Month-themed shows such as Acts of Wonder, Call for Creativity, Stellar Support and Super Smarts. The annual Sydney Royal Easter Show is on in Sydney, Australia from April 6th to April 19th at the Sydney Showground, Sydney Olympic Park. One of the main attractions of the Easter Show are the show bags, fun-filled bags for little kids and big kids alike. In 2017, there is just one Justice League show bag available, which includes Superman merchandise, and it sells for $26. Superman fan John Jordan has completed another of his Superman fan animations, this time bringing us the 9 minute Superman vs the Mad Scientist. John said, I worked on it for about a year to do the animation, I wanted to do one in the style of the old Fleischer cartoons from the 1940s. I created all the art and animation, not sampling anything from the old cartoons. You can watch the animation in full at our website now. Thanks to Warrior Jackets, the Superman homepage is pleased to be able to give away a Superman Blue Letterman jacket. To enter the contest, you simply need to answer our contest question and fill out the form on the contest page. The contest ends at midnight on Thursday, April 6th. The winner will be announced on the front page of the Superman homepage on Friday, April 7th. Head to our website now to enter. The 147th and final episode of Radio KAL, the monthly podcast of the Superman homepage, is now available to listen to. In this episode, Scotty and I explain how the monthly podcast will now be incorporated into our weekly Radio KAL live show. You can take a listen to the episode at supermanhomepage.com slash radio. The Superman homepage Super Trivia Quiz has been updated for another month. The three questions we're asking you this time around are... Who voiced the role of Mr. Mixius Pitalik in Superman the Animated Series? Who played the role of Mr. Mixius Pitalik in the Lois and Clark TV series? And once he is sent back to his own dimension, a minimum of how many days must elapse before Mr. Mixius Pitalik can return to once again trouble Superman? If you think you know the answers to all three questions, head to our website now to submit your entry. You'll find the Super Trivia Quiz under the Favourites menu. Once again this year we caught out a number of fans with two April Fool's Day fake news stories. Our first story stated that all the Superman scenes had been edited out of the upcoming Justice League movie, while the second fake news item reported that the Superman statue in Metropolis, Illinois had been decapitated in a freak storm. This Superman statue story went viral, with the Metropolis Chamber of Commerce receiving hundreds of calls wondering if the statue would be repaired in time for June's Superman celebration, and our website was unreachable for a few hours from all the hits we were receiving from people sharing the story on Facebook. Crazy stuff. That's all the news there was for the week March 29th, April 4th. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to support us on Patreon.com. And don't forget to check out our weekly Radio KL live show on Tuesday nights. That's it from me. I'll be back a bit later on with this week's Did You Know segment. But for now, here's Scotty V. Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. And welcome to another fabulous episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. Thanks for watching. So, this past week we had, of course, April Fool's Day, one of the greatest and most incredible holidays in existence, of course. As we all know, it's that time of year where everyone gathers around the April Fool's tree and opens April Fool's presents with all of their April Fool's families. And so, we here in America, Australia, and lots of other countries celebrate this fantastic holiday of holidays with great pranks on each other because it's a super important thing to do and we got to take it extremely seriously and all of our feelings should be hurt if something is said that was considered a prank 
that we personally didn't like. What am I referring to? Superman homepage, uh, which I do this vidcast for, and I have done Radio KAL for for the past several years. Every year on April 1st does some fake stories. Most of them are completely absurd, and once you think about what day it is, and once you realize what you're looking at, generally you can figure out that it's all a big joke, that it's April Fool's Day, and maybe that the joke isn't even that funny, and, and maybe it wasn't even meant to be that funny, and maybe it it wasn't even meant to fool you or scare you or make you think that, oh dear lord, Henry Cavill scenes have been cut out of Justice League. Yes, that was one of the stories that was put on the homepage this year because everyone's a little worried since there were no Henry Cavill scenes in the trailer that was just released. People are talking about how come they didn't show Superman. Why isn't there a Superman symbol on that Justice League thing that you can put on your profile picture? Well, the reason is, as I spoke about last week, is because they're trying to, even though we all kind of know Superman's going to come back, and it was hinted at at the end of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, they're trying to keep under wraps exactly what his role is, how he comes back, what happens, and then how it's going to go. So they want it to be somewhat of a surprise. And... Who knows when he's going to don the full uniform, will he be in black, what will happen with him. Anyway, some people got gotten by that joke and sometimes that happens. You know, when I first tuned into the page that day, I saw it and I thought, what? Wait a minute. And I almost clicked on it and I realized it was April 1st. Now when you do click on the story, what you get is a big picture of Mixie S. Pitalik laughing at you saying you've been fooled April Fool's Day and right on the first page it tells you that it's all a joke. There isn't even a story in fact. It'll just say a part of the story and then it'll say click here to read more. If you click here to read more you're let in on the joke. Another one of the jokes that was put up was that the Superman statue in Metropolis, Illinois, which about three people on earth know about, had lost its head during a storm. Some people online are freaking out or upset, and even the Metropolis Chamber of Commerce has reported getting lots of calls that people are apparently concerned that this actually happened. I don't know how many calls they're getting. I don't know how many calls they normally get. I don't think anybody's calling them on a regular basis because nothing's going on until, you know, June when the Superman celebration happens. I know. They have other things that go on throughout the year. Superman is their claim to fame. Metropolis, Illinois uh, is supposed to be the metropolis of Superman for that weekend in June. And people look forward to it. Fans look forward to it. We all flock there. I've been there. I love it. The chamber was great to me. They gave my daughter, who was two at the time, a little, little birthday party where a lot of the fans were gathered and sang together and we had cake. It was fun. Now, some people are complaining that this joke was in bad taste because there was some flooding last year and some storms so it was really possible that people could believe that this actually happened and they could really be freaked out because they thought the Superman statue would be destroyed in this storm. I don't believe the joke was in bad taste. I don't believe anybody meant to even call back to the storms that happened or anything like that. I think it was a goofy little thing that most people that would see it would pretty quickly realize that it was an April Fool's prank. And if they didn't, when they clicked on the story to find out, oh my gosh, what terrible thing has happened, they would then see that it was an April Fool's prank and in good spirit that it was intended to be and that it's always intended to be every year and other websites do it too and other places do it and people prank people on Twitter and people prank people in the workplace and all kinds of things get pranked. It was a goofy little joke meant to inspire a smile and a chuckle and go, oh boy, you almost got me or you got me for a minute or I was concerned. Obviously, the storm wasn't reported about on weather channels. It wasn't on the news. No one was hurt. There was nothing terrible that happened. You would have heard about it if it was. I think rather than them being sour grapes, rather than people saying it's a terrible joke and bad taste and how dare you say something could have happened. It's just an April Fool's prank. You could laugh at it or not. You can think April Fool's is stupid. You can not participate. Whatever. This was just something a little fun that the homepage does every year. Now, anybody who goes there kind of knows that that happens every year, but sometimes it sort of slips your mind. It slipped mine a little bit. First, I thought that Justice League story might have been real. Of course, that's because I know that DC doesn't look at Superman as top tier anymore and that Batman's their cash cow, so I could totally see them actually doing something like that. But I myself shared on my page that after Justice League, Henry Cavill was going to be recast, Superman was going to be recast, and that they're moving on to a new Superman. And I thought that was kind of, you know, silly. It's not happening. You didn't hear about it. It didn't get reported anywhere. Clearly, if you look into it at all, you know it's not real. But that 
to my mind, it's not something I would put past WB or DC happening anyway. Obviously, April Fool's is not one of the biggest holidays of the year. It's not something even everybody likes. Some people downright hate it. These were jokes. They were in good fun. They're posted there every year. And everybody kind of knows that uh, these are pranks. The first couple of stories at midnight on April 1st every single year are going to be goofy pranks, mostly outlandish, mostly couldn't have happened. And maybe if you get a little fooled, it's actually a good prank. Oh, boy. You almost got me because I know they had storms there last year or I know that's something that could happen. Uh, but it's not the end of the world should a statue lose its head anyway. So I don't think it's anything to freak about. That's all I wanted to say today. Thanks everybody for watching and remember, don't lose your head. Did you know that 58 years ago on March 31st, 1959, Action Comics 252 was released? And this was the comic book that introduced the world to Superman's cousin Supergirl. The Supergirl from Krypton story was written by Otto Binder with art by Al Plastino.